Okay guys, um, this is uh, step part two, uh, step two um, of um, lab 3.2, uh, multi-area OSPF with stub areas and authentication. Um, basically we're going to be configuring OSPF, just the initial config. So what I'll do is um, I'll just jump into R1 here, uh, go into enable mode, now show IP route, you can see that there are no basically show OSPF show IP route oh chump show IP route sorry protocols none cool so nothing's running okay so so what we'll do is we'll go into configuration terminal mode and I do show IP interface brief. Cool. So then I just go to route OSPF1, which is the process number. And then we go network 10.1.12.0. For the for this interface here, and uh, we'll go with uh, the wildcard. Area zero. Network ten dot one dot one dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot two five. Area zero. Okay. Exit out of that, and um, now we just need to go into interface loopback one. Okay, and now in here we'll go IP OSPF network point to point to point. Okay, so that's that done. So now if oh, I hate that, show IP protocols. Bam, it shows you that OSPF is running. Okay, that's on router one. Now we'll hop over to router two, go into enable mode, show IP protocols. Yep, nothing's running. So we're just going to configuration terminal, router OSPF, the process number, which is process number one. Now we do a sh do show IP interface brief. Why did I check Jack? Fix that. Cool. There we go. There are the interfaces. So now I go network 10.1.12.0 with a wildcard mask of 25 area 0. Okay. Network 10.1.2.0 5 area you guessed it 0 now I get out of that ok interface you can see OSPF is, set up, is created an adjacency already loop back number 2 and then we go in and go IP OSPF network Point to point. Show IP protocols. And there you have OSPF running on this router. Okay, now we'll jump over to router 3. Enable mode. Show IP protocols. Nothing's running on this router either. Conf T. Now, uh, now, just one second. Okay, I did jump the gun just a little bit here. Uh, let's just duck over to router one and we'll do some checking. So we'll do a show IP OSPF neighbors. And what does it say? Yep, I have a neighbor and that neighbor is uh, the, for the, what is it? The 10.1.2.1, uh, that's my neighbor ID. 
Um, okay, so that's that done. Now let's just jump over to router 2 and see if we can do that as well. Show IP OSPF neighbor. There you go. So they can see each other, they form the neighborship, neighbor relation. Now if I go show IP route on router 2, yeah, you get your direct connections, and here, you get the information that it's picked up via OSPF. So here we go, we have the, um, the loopback address from router 1 being propagated over to router 2. And if I go here, I do a show IP route on router 1. You have the OSPF loopback that it's picked up from router 2. So it's propagated through. So it's formed the, form the, form the form neighbors and they've shared information across. Okay, so up to this point, uh, we've basically been only dealing with one area, but now we're going to enact the second area. So we'll duck over to router two, which bridges both, which is actually functioning in both areas. So we'll go back into conf t mode, and then we'll go to router OSPF uh, one, and then we go network. 10.1.23.0. Now this is the other loopback address. But this one will not be in area 0, it'll be in area 23. Okay. Alrighty. So now, okay. That looks fine and dandy. Now we jump over to router 3, which is where I was before, before I jump the gun. Now we go to router. OSPF, OSPF 1 for the process, network 10.1.23.0.0.0.0.55, area 23, network 10.1.3.0. 0 .0 0 .0 area 23. Okay, and then we'll get out of that. Exit with an I. Now, uh, we're going to interface loopback 3. And we turn that to point to point. Network point to point. Alrighty, so now, if I close that down there, now if I go into verify that the, the neighbor relationship has formed, so if I jump back into R2, and I do a show IP OSPF neighbor, run so you know, if I configured all this correctly hmm. so that all seems correct but for whatever reason or oh, maybe that's just the it's taking its sweet old time. Um, curious. Um, give me two seconds. Okay, guys, I've just gone away for two seconds and found out what I did wrong. Now, if I show you um, show IP interface brief, you'll notice that router uh, serial uh, 1 slash 0 is up, up, and serial 1 slash 1 is down, down even though it's configured. This is why I do a show CDP neighbor. And what do you know? It says, yep, I know where router two is. Router two is on one slash one, which is this interface, not this interface. So what I've done is I've configured the wrong interface. That's why it's always, that's why instead of me just typing show CDP neighbor, I should actually read the details of show CDP neighbor to make sure that my configuration is correct. Now, what I need to do is I just need to dump, jump into like the serial zero, uh, serial one slash zero, and get rid of the IP address. And then dump the IP address 
onto the other serial zero, which is one slash one. Okay. Now, if I do a ping, 10 slash 1 slash 23 slash 3. I should be, it should be able to ping itself. Just and this is why I didn't finish uni. Because I don't read what I'm doing. Comprehension. Teach your children how to read, people. Teach your children how to read. That's all I can say. Basically, I've done the same mistake twice. So here I will take the strip the IP address from this this interface. See? Taking it off. And then now we'll put it onto the one that it's supposed to be on. Which is this one, the one that's up. Okay, what am I doing? Damn putty in your select to cut and paste. Righty. Now, show IP interface brief. Ah, what do you know? What do you know? There you go. Found an adjacency. Go figure. It, Cisco spent all those millions and millions and millions of dollars on OSPF 20 years ago, and it works. Cool, I can ping across the link now. Now, if I do a show IP route, there you go. Show IP OSPF neighbor. What do you know? It works, so it found the other neighbor. How very lovely. Alrighty, so that's that part. That's step two done. Uh, next step will be configure a stub area. Okay, so watch that video.